All right, well, hello, Courageous Storytellers friends. My name is Matt Ayersman, and uh, we are super excited to have a really fun guest with us today. If you have spent any time on Facebook or Instagram lately, you have probably seen our guest today, Trey Kennedy. Um, this guy is hilarious. If you aren't following him yet, please go look him up. You are going to be uh, very glad that you did. Um, Trey, you just released a video, man, the, the girls in fall be like, that video, yeah. dude, I just lost it. It's so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I, I, that one, that one really took off, and it's funny because like a lot of my videos are just releasing frustration. I was like, if I see another girl post about the fall, and so I was like, we got to make this a video. And yeah, I think people loved it. Yeah. Oh, you nailed it, man. It's so funny. <laughs> well, if people aren't familiar with your work, can you give us a quick introduction? What you're up to these days? Sure. Yeah, Trey Kennedy. Um, I've been making mainly comedic content online for about five years now across social media. Um, so yeah, the, the main ones would be Instagram and Facebook right now. And you can find me at Trey Kennedy and yeah, just, uh, every week trying to put out some new content, um, uh, about all sorts of stuff. So it's fun. Cool. Well, you do a great job at it, man. You're so funny. Thanks. So, um, I mean, you're also a musician. You also have published quite a bit of music, and it's up on Spotify. So, um, and you've, I know you've written a couple of books for the Christmas season. So, it seems like you're kind of that typical creative guy who has a lot going on at once. Is that true? Do you consider yourself a creative? Yeah, I, I guess you know, that always sounds so cliche, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm I kind of stumbled at all this. I'm just trying to kind of make the most of it and have fun with it. So it seems like, yeah, I seem to keep stumbling upon different projects, which makes it really fun and interesting. Um, and um, just try to keep evolving or, or shifting gears and keeping it fun and fresh and creative. Yeah. Well, you definitely mm -hmm. do that. So tell, walk you. us through uh, your, like, do you have a creative process? Like if you have an idea for a video, just walk us through maybe the idea to, publishing it like just walk us through how you, what your process is like yeah um i don't know if there's that much of a process it's just kind of you know it there's just times just going around life an idea pops in my head and i, I do have like a running like notes on my phone of like okay i'll jot this down or oh that's funny for that and and then there also are times where i i a lot time to sit down and like let's write stuff and and try to hash this out but um, <clears throat> yeah, it just varies. Sometimes a video I've sat down and intentionally written it. And there's others where that morning something pops in my head and, and we just kind of go shoot it and come up with it on the fly. So, um, sometimes a process, sometimes not you just kind of inspiration comes at weird times too. Yeah. One of the beauty of social media and what you do is you're able to kind of just do it whenever you have an idea, just turn your phone on and, and roll. So it seems like right. some of yours are a little bit more kind of off the cuff, but then some are a little bit more produced. So do you, you said you For script sure. some and then some are just more fun on the fly. Yeah, absolutely. Some are definitely more uh, stripped to like the girls. An example, like the girls during fall one that was uh, so big. We definitely had that idea. I've, I've made fun of girls before, but like, okay, I want to do this fall one and I, I talked to like my sister and like any other girls like, okay, like tell me some like really annoying stuff girls do. Like, do you agree, disagree? And, um, and they go out and shoot it with, uh, the guy who shoots for me. And, and while we're out there, we come up with probably a third of the jokes. You just kind of see, like, Oh wait, let's go make a joke over there. Like, that's funny. Oh, there's a gazebo. Like, let's go. And so that, that's kind of how it seems to play out more times than not. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. So this month on our site, we're talking all about creativity, and um, one thing that some some people in our that are writing for us this month, some people have some different opinions on this. Some people seem to say, you know, a lot of people are just born with creativity. There's you know, there's creatives and there's non-creatives. Um, what what would you say? Like, is is creativity something you've been able to kind of grow and stretch and um, grow in, or is it something you just feel like you were kind of born with this gift and it's in you? How, how would you describe creativity in your life? That, I love that topic. We could talk forever on that, but I, I think I think everyone's creative, um, and it's a shame whenever someone I hear someone say like I'm not creative, I'm not creative, because um, I I think that goes against how even God made us. But um, like even for me as a young kid, I remember I was good at like the math problems in like third grade, and so that everyone told me like Oh, you're gonna be like an engineer, like your sister's the creative one, she's left handed, da da da. Like you're, and I and it's like I kind of. It, it's a shame looking back, I was kind of pinned that way and it took me a long time to actually discover through like making 
videos online or whatever that, okay, you know, I am creative. Um, and that's certainly um, a muscle that I've like grown and worked on, I think. Yeah. Cool. So mm -hmm. someone maybe has like, like you has been told that they're not creative or they're in a field that isn't necessarily thought of that way. Um, what are some ways if they want to kind of increase their potential there? Do you have any ideas of how we can kind of stretch and grow our creativity? I think, yeah, a big foundation of creativity is just risk and um, getting to where I am now is just a lot of risk. And because any, anytime you create something and put it out there, that's a risk of like how it'll be received. And so um, I would, I would say, yeah, I'm definitely where I'm at because I've taken a lot of risk or in my mind, it was things that were outside my comfort zone and, and seem scary to me. And there's been creations I've, that I've had that have been rejected and some who haven't. And so that's, that's kind of how I would, first describe it yeah yeah definitely so i'm kind of curious how, how did you get to where you are did with your comedy sp stuff yeah. in specific did you just kind of start filming goofy stuff with your friends and it kind of took off or how did how'd you get to where yeah. you are today exactly i was uh sophomore in college when the app vine came out that uh you know it was deleted a couple years ago or something um and so yeah just living with them in college and goofing around and i got pretty into it and I remember got like a few thousand followers and everyone was like, whoa. And then I had that one video that just a week later I had hundred thousand followers and kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, that was, you, it sounds like you sort of stumbled into this and like you yeah. talked about it, it took you taking risks and doing stuff like with Vine, it was kind of a new medium, new platform. Sure. You just kind of went with it. I'm sure you never would have guessed you'd end up where you are now, just making goofy videos with your friends a few years ago. Yeah, absolutely. Because I and there was times like I enjoyed doing it, and I started following, and then people were kind of like, "What's this? Like, what are you doing? What this is weird?" And you have to kind of like wade through that and be like, you know, no, this is fine. I'm enjoying this, and uh, <clears throat> and just keep keep going. Because yeah, there's been a lot of people who've been wondering like, what in the world is this guy doing? But um, but I'm glad I ignored that. Yeah. So one thing that we in the church kind of run into all the time is just critics and criticism. Like if you do anything remotely creative, anything new, people are probably going to not like it at first. Or at least some people are going to be slow to adopt new things. So sure. ha have you come up against that? How do you deal with comments like that? Um, you don't think I deal with that as much as like you said with church and stuff. But um, like I just had, I've been forced to deal with not that much of that, but I just had a recent deal where I, I made a video and apparently it was, it was similar to this other creator online who made a video. And so he posted his fans like, you know, go after Trey Kennedy. He stole my content or something. So I have all these like fans that blow me up. And so, and it was kind of like frustrating and annoying. Like I'm not out here trying to steal anyone's content, but uh, <clears throat> just to kind of, I just kind of put out there like, Hey, I haven't seen the video. So sorry. His stuff's hilarious. Go check him out move on and uh and you know i think there, there's some degree where you need to pay attention to criticism but stuff like that you just kind of have to let roll off your back and, and keep moving forward especially yeah. as a comedian how, how does that affect you is that like do you kind of take that personally when people say that kind of stuff about you uh that yeah I, I feel like i've done a really good job over the years not letting that get to me but stuff like that you know maybe takes a little personal because um it's like I've been doing this for how many years and I've I'm never like ripped off anyone's jokes or content. Like I'm not doing that. Um and so yeah, it's easy to think like I'm gonna take it online, like make my case, but people have their opinions and um yeah, you just gotta keep keep moving. I mean anytime you make art, like some of you is in that, right? So that it feels like they're attacking you and it's it's hard to not sure. take that personally. Sure. sure. Absolutely. While we're on comedy, I want to talk about that a little bit. And since we're talking to a lot of people who work in churches, a lot of Christian leaders aren't necessarily known for their comedy. Um, we sure. typically, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of Christian leaders seem to steer clear of that. I guess yeah. because of the risk, I guess, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's it's kind of cool to see guys like you and, you know, um, Michael Jr. and um, John Chris yeah. and some of those kind of guys. Like, it seems like this kind of new generation, I mean, I don't want to call you a Christian yeah. comedian, but... Sure. Um, why Why do you think there's kind of this new trend in comedy from people who have faith who are kind of willing to address some things that haven't been addressed in the past? Um, I just think that's kind of social media in general. Like, you know, it's easier to say things 
over here than it is like in person. And um, so for someone like myself or John or anyone who may have some of following and can make some decent points here or there and push the agenda through jokes or comedy. And, uh, and then you start to realize like a lot of people are like, yeah, I agree. And um, I, I think that's just kind of social media innately is it's easier to, to talk about those tougher things, um, which can be good and bad, but you know, in some cases it, it can be good to start that conversation to take into the real world and not just behind phones and stuff. Sure. <clears throat> so I'm curious, like you, you make, you know, several jokes about kind of Christian culture stuff. You, you had a really funny video about the youth pastor whose, whose Bible died because he was reading the Bible on an iPad. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. so you, you talk a lot about Christian culture stuff, but then some of your videos don't really address Christian at all. So I'm curious about your audience. Like how, how people, how, how do people take those kind of two sides of the comedy that you're talking about these days? Yeah, I think, um, see so like the youth pastor bit or maybe one or two others, like, yeah, a small minority of my content is any kind of Christian comedy, I guess. Um, but if I would describe it, like if, if you're a believer and paying attention, like you can tell I am. And if you're not, you, that's maybe something that you're, it's not screaming at you, but when maybe you can detect through something, but I'm just <clears throat> really just like you said, like making this as part of who I am and I'm going to be true to who I am. And I'm, a believer and someone who grew up in the South. And so that's kind of kind of come through in the jokes and stuff like the youth pastor video or whatever. I think anyone can relate to that because um, everyone knows the basic stories of the Bible and, and everyone knows there's like, everyone's been to church, almost everyone's been to church. And so we get it. And so I think it's been cool to, to see uh, the, the audience I have where there's a lot of believers there, but also a lot of, uh, non-believers I believe I think and uh, so it's that's been cool yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. do, you, do you think like what can those of us in the church what can we learn from that kind of perspective like how because a lot of us I think are so tied to just um, you know our church and kind of talking the Christian language but you do a great job of right. balancing that so if we, if we work in churches do you have any advice for us to maybe reaching new audiences in ways that that maybe you are um, I think yeah, the first thing that comes to mind, like you said, is the Christian language. Like, um, <clears throat> it, it's just, I think there's such a wide gap now where, like, those people, like, people who aren't in the church don't even understand what we're saying, you know? <laughs> like, uh, so, because it's been cool, too. Like, I grew up, born and raised in Oklahoma. Like, now doing what I'm doing, I'm in Los Angeles a lot or New York City and these places where definitely, you know, getting outside of my bubble growing up and, um, <clears throat> and just being around them and, and hearing little things like, you know, um, you know, like salvation, they don't even know what that word means or, um, just little things like, Oh, like Trey's a Christian. You go to church, right? They equate just like attending church with being a Christian, all these things where, uh, it's just, it's easy to forget the bubble we're in. And, um, so try and, and so in my comment, just, in my content, just making stuff that resonates with everyone, I think is is helpful to get everyone talking. For sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, you, as we've mentioned, like you are, I think, just an expert in social media. And again, that's an area where a lot of churches don't necessarily thrive necessarily all uh -huh. the time. So, what do you have any advice again for for church leaders for social media? What can we be doing differently that might be reaching people in a new way? Do you have any ideas for that? Sure. Um, and I think I've seen a lot of churches like making really good efforts and doing a good job. Obviously just, yeah, paying attention to what's relevant right now and, and going for that and doing it in a, you know, hopefully genuine organic way. And, um, yeah, I just say, and I, I would, it's, I would make use of the younger generation for sure. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing, like me working with different stuff that I do in my world, like uh, first, like branded content or something. These older executives are making these decisions, and they're like, "Why is the my story reversed?" It's like because it's a selfie. Like they don't even know what how it works, and so you know, like a seventeen-year-old kid's gonna know. You know, some sixteen-year-old girl in your youth ministry is gonna know better than like some thirty-something-year-old guy probably. So I just, yeah, I just stay in that conversation with the the younger generations and and try to tap into that and take advantage good 
So you mentioned earlier, I think you mentioned earlier that you're, do you aim to post something about once a week? Like, do you have kind of a schedule that you stick to for your videos or how, how have you kind of, do you have a routine or how do you, what kind of schedule do you have? No, it's uh, <clears throat> not necessarily a perfect posting schedule. I, I try not to go more than four or five days without posting something. And so uh, that that varies and like if I'm traveling, I might, I might have a week where I'm shooting and creating a lot more and than not one week. And so, yeah, that's not as scheduled uh, as maybe I'd like it to be, but uh, just, just always shooting to have some up at least weekly, every five days, something like that. Cool. So I'm curious, what kind of, do you have several kind of backlogs? Are you just kind of doing stuff in real time or like, how does that uh, work for you? I recently tried to, I've done a little better and worked on having some content backlogged and, um, but it was, and, and now I have like, a video guy and people kind of help me so it, it really is, helps me do more and makes it easier but for the very first uh large majority of when i was doing this it was it was me and the camera and like i'd wake up on a wednesday and be like i need to post a video today and we just like figure it out and shoot it and post it that day so um but yeah it's, it's evolving but it's still a lot of just on the fly yeah well especially because i mean from the outside at least it just seems like you you grew so quickly um, mm -hmm. so you have a video guy now and like you said it was just you on your phone a little bit ago um, so but that transition has been kind of interesting too since you do you feel like you kind of need to keep up your persona now that you've had a bigger following I, I yeah I try to there's times you get caught up in that but I, I most, mostly don't feel any pressure I'm just having fun and and with uh, yeah so I was a Spent all, the first majority of it just me and my phone, and then I got a camera and tried to figure it out. So it was me on like a high resolution camera, and then <clears throat> now I have a guy. And so each of those notches like just helps me make better content, opens up more possibilities. So <clears throat> um, yeah, I do pretty good not feel the pressure, and everyone who follows me is really kind. And um, but yeah, definitely trying to to put the effort in to keep keep getting better and better. Yeah, cool. cool. So you mentioned that creativity is something that you just really enjoy talking about. Um, do you have any other advice or things you want to share with us about creativity or creative journey or advice for us who work in the church? Um, yeah, just like I said, I, I mean, I was told I wasn't creative and I am, and I think everyone is. It's just a matter of like getting outside your comfort zone and, and putting yourself out there. Cause um, I think whether, I mean, everyone creates things. And um, so, yeah, I just think it's a shame when people don't, believe they are creative so yeah i would just encourage anyone to bring ideas to the table or or try to create stuff um and and i think that's something that can improve over time do you <coughs> kind of come up with your own ideas pretty organically or, or do you go out looking for inspiration or how do you come up with new ideas there's yeah there's there's phases where like i feel like man i can't come up with anything but um i just I think the biggest thing is because a really viral video of someone where someone sees and they laugh and they're also like, yes, like I agree or I've experienced that. So like the girls in the fall, we've all been on our phones and I'm like, how many leaves photos am I going to see, you know? And so I think <clears throat> a lot of it is, so I suppose a video like mom's getting ready for company. Like I experienced that your mom like freaking out, you know? So and that, so stuff like that, I asked my buddies, like, was your mom like this? Like, oh my gosh, yes. And like, okay, like everyone agrees here, how do we make it funny? And so I think just finding things that I know, just kind of silly things or annoying things or things that frustrate us that everyone can relate to. And then how do we make that funny? Yeah. One mm -hmm. thing that you're great at, like with, with your mom one that you just posted, or you have a lot of really funny ones about the kind of stereotypical nerdy dad. Um, yeah. Like, like my mom is not like that mom and my dad is not like that dad, but there's enough, there's just enough where I get it. Like there's probably not a mom exactly like the mom that you make right. your, your character, but all of us, that's, that's our mom a little bit, you know? Right. Cause you can watch, yeah, it's not even my mom, but there's like even maybe two jokes where like, okay, my mom, she said that or, or yeah, yeah, totally. So when you're coming up with those characters, do you just... Should you just go over the top on purpose just to hope that something connects with people or how do you make those characters that resonate so well? Uh, yeah, it, it just kind of happens like the recent mom video for preparing for holidays. We actually were shooting. We actually started shooting. We we're just going to be a general like 
how you know every mom ever or whatever and just kind of like really in their child's business or you know checking their grades online or they don't know how to turn the tv on or whatever and then as we kind of shot it it kind of morphed into this oh how it's doesn't your mom like freak out when company comes and that kind of happens so yeah there's a lot of like during the actual shooting of it there's a lot of kind of audibles called and jokes that just arise and you just kind of run with it yeah yeah you do a great job at that man they're so funny yeah. Thanks. Um, so I, I might put you on the spot a little bit. It's okay if you don't want to do this. But for people who maybe haven't seen your videos, do you want to give us a taste? Like, do you have, what's what's one of your favorite jokes or favorite character? Could you give us just a quick quick taste of one of your recent videos? Oh, well, there, yeah, just some of the jokes. Like, uh, let's say we talked about the girls during fall one. Um, or even, even one that just came to mind, I shot with John Christ in Nashville. We made fun of, like, Every girl's going to the Bachelorette in Nashville, and uh, and the one of the I've seen people, all these people come up to me saying like, "This is their favorite joke." Because so I walked up, there's like an Elvis Presley statue on Broadway. I was like, oh my, "Is this? Did a picture of me? I love Luke Bryan." And right. was, there's, there's like, like yeah, uh, the girls going to country. They've never listened to country music in their life. They're like, Nashville. Nah, so uh, just goofy stuff like that. Yeah. Even your your like girl voice, like you just mastered that, like. Immediately, I know you're doing a you know twenty thirty girl. Yeah, how, yeah. how did you, how did you come up with that? Just happen. I mean, that I guess some of that is a gift, a strange gift. I don't know, but I, yeah, I think um, I think I've always been really observant, and I grew up with all these girls in my family, and it's just kind of there. I don't know. <laughs> you mastered it. You've absolutely mastered yeah. it. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> So another thing we talk a lot about is um, rest and just taking care of yourself because I think that's something that a lot of people um, in the church and maybe especially when you get a little bit of success, it's like we've, we talked a little bit about keeping up with that grind. Um, has that been an issue for you or how do you keep grounded and give yourself sure. a break? How have you done that, especially recently with the su success you've had? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, that's definitely something I've started to prioritize more like especially being on social media, we're all, everyone's on it. Everyone would agree they're on it too much. And I like do it for a living. So I am like, I've definitely, I feel like it's caught up with me recently where I'm like, okay, I need to set boundaries and I don't wake up to it or go to bed with it. Um, and just on the weekends or on Sunday, make points to just not even look at it or whatever. And, um, and so, yeah, I think that's a big part because it's easy to just get caught up and obsessed with the numbers. And so I try to put that down and, and recenter and be like, these are real people that I'm getting to maybe make smile or laugh here and there, not just like numbers I'm trying to accrue. So the, the kind of keeping that uh, focus and, and putting it up at times has been, yeah, something I've focused on more and more. Yeah. Cool. Do you hear from a lot of, fans people like does that kind of keep you going to hear that you're making people laugh yeah yeah it's it's great i'm both in person and through messages or whatever i i notice people who say like i needed this or this he's really been going through a hard time whatever and those are so kind and and yeah do a lot to keep me going cool mm -hmm. awesome well i don't want to take too much of your time here before you wrap um, I think I mentioned that Trey's got a couple of books out for the holidays, so go check out his website or follow him on Twitter and Instagram to see all of those. Um, do you have any new yeah. videos coming out, Trey? Can we look for anything new coming out soon? Um, yeah, I'm going to work on some new stuff. Um, might, have to, might have to shoot. We talked so much about that. Might have to shoot the girls during Christmas or something because that's a whole other ball game, you know. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll. You never know. We'll see what comes out. But yeah, like you said. Follow me, Trey Kennedy. I have some new fun, like dad Christmas themed uh, book and some shirts. So if you need a stocking stuffer, check me out. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Man. Yeah. And we also mentioned that Trey's got some really great music too. So the next time you're on Spotify, I didn't know, but yeah. you got a super great voice and you're putting out some great music too. So look him up there. And um, yeah, if you haven't watched this stuff, please go do it. You will, you know, go down a wormhole where you'll have, you know, there are hours of content you make. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Follow awesome. through on, but oh, he's so funny. So be sure to check out Trey Kennedy. Trey, thank you so much for being with us, man. Thanks for um, your encouragement to the church and for um, just the, the great work that you're doing. 
Um, anything else you want to say before we wrap up today? I'm great. Appreciate the time again, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all around on social media. Awesome. Trey, thanks so much, man. You bet. Thank you.